Sukuk Arabic, squeak sukuk, plural of skay sak, legal instrument, deed, check, is the Arabic name for financial certificates, also commonly referred to as sharia compliant bonds. Sukuk are defined by the AAOIFI Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions as securities of equal denomination representing individual ownership interests in a portfolio of eligible existing or future assets." The Fiqh Academy of the OIC legitimized the use of sukuk in February 1988. Sukuk were developed as an alternative to conventional bonds which are not considered permissible by many Muslims as they pay interest and may finance businesses involved in non-Sharia compliant activities gambling, alcohol, pork, etc. Sukuk securities are structured to comply with Sharia by paying profit, not interest, generally by involving a tangible asset in the investment. For example, sukuk securities may have partial ownership of a property built by the investment company and held in a special purpose vehicle, so that sukuk holders can collect the property's profit as rent, which is allowed under Islamic law. Because they represent ownership of real assets and at least in theory, do not guarantee repayment of initial investment, sukuk resemble equity instruments, but like a bond and unlike equity, regular payments cease upon their expiration. However, most sukuk are asset-based rather than asset-backed. Their assets are not truly owned by their special purpose vehicle, and their holders have recourse to the originator if there is a shortfall in payments. Different types of sukuk are based on different structures of Islamic contracts murabaha, ahara, istizna, musharaka, istithmar, etc. Depending on the project the sukuk is financing, according to the State of the Global Islamic Economy Report 2016-17, of the $2.004 trillion of assets being managed in a sharia-compliant manner in 2015, $342 billion were sukuk, being made up of 2,354 sukuk issues. In common usage outside of Arabic speaking countries, the word sukuk is often used both as singular as well as plural. In the Arabic language, sukuk is plural, sak is singular. History In the classical period of Islam, sak meant any document representing a contract or conveyance of rights, obligations or monies done in conformity with the sharia. The term was used to refer to forms of papers representing financial obligations originating from trade and other commercial activities in the Islamic pre modern period. According to Camille Paldi, the first sukuk transaction took place in Damascus in its great mosque in the 7th century AD. Muslim traders are known to have used the check or sack system since the time of Harun al Rashid of the Abbasid Caliphate. The modern Western word, check, appears to have been derived from sack. Singular of sukuk, which during the Middle Ages referred to a written agreement to pay for goods when they were delivered, and was used to avoid money having to be transported across dangerous terrain. Modern answering a need to provide short and medium term instruments so that balance sheets of Islamic financial institutions could be more liquid, the Fiqh Academy of the OIC Organization of Islamic Countries legitimized the use of sukuk in February 1988. In 1990, one of the first contemporary sukuk worth RM 125 million were issued by Malaysia Shell MDS SDNBHD, on the basis of by Bithaman Ahi. There were no other sukuk issued until 2000 when the market began to take off. In 2000, the government of Sudan issued domestic sovereign short-term sukuk worth 77 million Sudanese pounds on the basis of musharaka. In 2001, the sukuk market went international with the issuance of the first US dollar denominated Ahara sukuk, worth 100 million dollars by the Central Bank of Bahrain. Since then many sovereign and corporate sukuk issues have been offered in various jurisdictions to standardize the growing market. The AAOIF issued Sharia Standard Number no. 17 on investment sukuk in May 2003. It became effective starting the 1st of January 2004. Topic industry as of early 2017, there were 328 billion dollars worth of sukuk outstanding worldwide. As of the end of 2016, there were about 146 US dollar denominated Islamic fixed income securities issued in the global markets that were investment grade and had a duration of at least 1 year. These securities, which make up the City Sukuk Index, had an average maturity of 4.54 years and most were issued by governments. 
The top four issuers by market weight, making up over 40% of the market, were, Islamic Development Bank, Perusahan Penerbit Sbsnindooiii, Saudi Electricity Co., Soq Sukuk Aqsc. About three quarters of the Sukuk market is domestic, not international. Most Sukuk are not investment grade however, and as of 2015, there were 2,354 Sukuk issues in total, including local currency denominated, non-global market Sukuk, according to Thomson Reuters and Dinar Standard. According to the Malaysian International Islamic Financial Centre, as of 2013 the biggest issuers of Sukuk were governments 65.6%, and the second largest were power and utility companies 13.6%. Topic secondary market Sukuk securities tend to be bought and held. As a result, few securities enter the secondary market to be traded. Furthermore, only public Sukuk are able to enter this market, as they are listed on stock exchanges. The secondary market, whilst developing, remains a niche segment with virtually all of the trading done at the institution level. The size of the secondary market remains unknown, though LMC Bahrain states they traded $55.5 million of Sukuk in 2007. As of July 2014 Sukuk.com listed 15 Sukuk on the secondary market for Gulf Sukuk. Topic principles Ali Arsalan Tariq states that Islamic finance, including Sukuk, is based on a set of several prohibitions, transactions in unethical goods and services, earning returns from a loan contract riba, interest, compensation-based restructuring of debts, excessive uncertainty in contracts garar, gambling and chance-based games QIMAR, trading in debt contracts at discount, and, forward foreign exchange transactions, as Sharia considers money to be a measuring tool for value and not an asset in itself. It requires that one should not receive income from money or anything that has the genus of money alone, as this simplistically, interest is riba, and forbidden. From a sharia perspective, certificates of debt are not tradable except at their par value although a different view is held by many in Malaysia, while a bond is a contractual debt obligation of the issuer to pay to bondholders, on certain specified dates, interest and principal, a sukuk is a certificate giving sukuk holders an undivided beneficial ownership in the underlying assets. Consequently, Sukuk holders are entitled to share in the revenues generated by the Sukuk assets as well as being entitled to share in the proceeds of the realization of the Sukuk assets. Topic similarities with bonds Sukuk and bonds are sold to investors who receive a stream of payments until the date of the maturity of the Sukuk or bond, at which time they get their original investment in the case of Sukuk a full payment is not guaranteed back. Sukuk and bonds are intended to provide investment with less risk than equities such as shares of stock and so are often used to balance a portfolio of investment instruments. Both Sukuk and bonds must issue a disclosure document known as a prospectus to describe the security they are selling. To give investors an idea of how much risk is involved in particular Sukuk bonds, rating agencies rate the credit worthiness of the issuers of the Sukuk bond. Both Sukuk and bonds are initially sold by their issuers. After that they or some Sukuk and bonds may be bought and sold by brokers and agents, mostly on the over-the-counter OTC market, but are also available on some stock exchanges around the world. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Differences from bonds. Ownership Sukuk should indicate partial ownership of an asset. Bonds indicate a debt obligation. Compliance, the assets that back Sukuk should be compliant with Sharia. Bonds need only comply with laws of country, locality they are issued in. Pricing, the face value of a Sukuk is priced according to the value of the assets backing them. Bond pricing is based on credit rating, i.e. the issuer's credit worthiness. Rewards and risks, Sukuk can increase in value when the assets increase in value. Returns from bonds correspond to fixed interest, because most bonds' interest rates are fixed, most increase in value when the market interest rates fall. Sales, when you sell Sukuk, you are selling ownership in the assets backing them. In instances where the certificate represents a debt to the holder, the certificate will not be tradable on the secondary market and instead should be held until maturity. The sale of bonds is the sale of debt. Principle, Sukuk investors in theory, share the risk of the underlying asset and may not get all their initial investment the face value of the Sukuk back. 
The value payable to the sukuk holder on maturity should be the current market value of the assets or enterprise and not the principal originally invested. According to Taki Usamani, bond investors are guaranteed the return of their initial investment principal. In practice, some sukuk are issued with repurchase guarantees. Conventional bonds are issued with underwriters. Sukuk may underwriters do not usually conduct the issuance and may not be required. Sukuk use special purpose vehicles to be the trustee, issuer of the sukuk. Topic. Definitions, structure and characteristics Definitions The AAOIFI Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions, the body which issues standards on accounting, auditing, governance, ethical, and sharia standards defines sukuk as securities of equal denomination representing individual ownership interests in a portfolio of eligible existing or future assets", or, "...certificates of equal value representing undivided shares in the ownership of tangible assets, usufructs and services or in the ownership of the assets of particular projects or special investment activity." The Islamic Financial Services Board defines sukuk as certificates with each sak representing a proportional undivided ownership right in tangible assets, or a pool of predominantly tangible assets, or a business venture. These assets may be in a specific project or investment activity in accordance with sharia rules and principles. The Securities Commission of Malaysia defines sukuk as a document or certificate, which represents the value of an asset. Nidsharia forbids both the trading of short-term debt instruments except at face value, and the drawing upon the established interbank money markets both being seen as transactions involve interest and excessive uncertainty As a consequence, prior to the development of the sukuk market, the balance sheets of Islamic financial institutions tended to be highly illiquid and lacking in short- and medium-term investment opportunities for their current assets. Structure and characteristic sukuk are structured in several different ways. The AAOIFI has laid down 14 different types of sukuk. While a conventional bond is a promise to repay a loan, sukuk constitute partial ownership in a debt, asset, project, business, or investment. Debt sukuk marabaha. These sukuk are not common because their payments to investors represent debt and are therefore not tradable or negotiable according to sharia. If diluted with other non marahaha sukuk in a mixed portfolio, they may be traded. Asset sukuk alahara. These are essentially rental or lease contracts, or conventional lease revenue bonds. With these sukuk, the borrower's tangible asset is backquote sold backquote to the financier and then backquote leased backquote back to the borrowers. The borrowers then make regular payments back to the financiers from the income stream generated by the asset. They are the most common type of sukuk as of 2015, and have been described by Falil Jamaldeen as well known because of their simplicity, tradability and ability to provide a fixed flow of income. Asset at a future date, sukuk al-salam. In this sukuk the SPV does not buy an asset but agrees to buy one at a future date in exchange for advance payments. The asset is then sold in the future for its cost plus a profit by an agent. On or before the date agreed to in the contract, the seller delivers the asset to the agent who sells the asset who passes the proceeds minus expenses, fees onto the SPV, which distributes the proceeds to the sukuk holders. Sukuk al-salam are at least usually used to support a company's short-term liquidity requirements. Holders receive payment not with a regular flow of income, but at maturity, similar to a zero-coupon bond. An example of this kind of sukuk are 91-day CBB sukuk al-salam issued by Central Bank of Bahrain Project sukuk al -Istizna. These sukuk are complex and cannot be traded in the secondary market or sold to a third party for less than its face value. Business sukuk al -Musharaka. These sukuk holders are also the owners of the originator issuing the sukuk and participate in the decision-making. These sukuk can be traded in the secondary market or investment sukuk al istithmar the most commonly used sukuk structures replicate the cash flows of conventional bonds such structures are listed on exchanges commonly the luxembourg stock exchange and london stock exchange in europe and made tradable through conventional organizations like euroclear or clearstream a key technique to achieve capital protection without amounting to a loan is a binding promise to repurchase certain assets, e.g. in the case of sukuk al-ahara, by the issuer. 
In the meantime a rent is being paid, which is often benchmarked to an interest rate Libra is the most common though its use is criticized by some Sharia scholars. The most accepted structure, which is tradable, is thereafter the sukuk al-ahara. Death certificates can only be bought before the finance occurs and then held to maturity, from an Islamic perspective. This is critical for debt trading at market value without incurring the prohibited riba interest on money. Topic: <inaudible> Issuing and payment process. Step-by-step -step process of issuing a sukuk based on an asset. The originator, a business firm requiring capital, creates a special purpose vehicle (SPV), an independent entity and structures. The SPV protects the sukuk assets from creditors if the originator has financial troubles. It specifies what asset or activity the sukuk will support, how large the issuance of sukuk will be, their face amounts, interest rates, maturity date. SPV are often located in tax-efficient jurisdictions, such as Bahrain, Luxembourg or the Cayman Islands. The SPV issues the sukuk offering it for sale to investors with an agreement spelling out the relationship between obligator and sukuk holders depending on the type of sukuk this can be lesser and lessee, partner, etc. With the money from the sale of sukuk certificates, the SPV passes offering to the originator who makes the sharia-compliant asset purchase, lease, joint venture, etc. again depending on the type of sukuk. The SPV purchases assets such as land, building, machinery from the originator. The sale proceeds are paid to the originator debtor as the price of the assets. The SPV, acting as a trustee on behalf of the sukuk holders, arranges to lease the assets back to the originator who pays the sukuk holders the lease income. The originator buys back the asset from the SPV at a nominal price on termination of the lease. In this type of sukuk, fixed interest of a conventional bond is replaced by fixed lease income. Islamic economist Muhammad Akram Khan complains that sukuk are different from conventional finance in form and formalities rather than substance, and may even be more expensive for the income provided than a conventional bond. Topic. Example An example of a sukuk was a $100 million security used to finance the construction and delivery of cooling plants in Abu Dhabi. This sukuk had an istisna'a and ahara structure and was issued by the Tabreed Financing Corporation or National Central Cooling Company PJSC in March 2004. Tabreed created an SPV incorporated in the Cayman Islands, which sold certificates of sukuk bonds. With the proceeds of this sale it bought some partially completed central cooling plants assets held in trust for the sukuk. 1. The SPV leased the trust assets to the Tabreed. 2. Which made rental payments to the SPV. 3. Which passed the payments on to sukuk holders. 4. When the sukuk matured the trust assets are bought back from the SPV and the sukuk holders got their principal back, if some dissolution event e.g. destruction of the leased property had interrupted the payment of rent this would have prompted the continuation of payments in the form of repurchase price. This reduced the risk structure of the sukuk to that or near that of conventional bonds, which permits the sukuk to earn the same or close to the same credit ratings that conventional bonds earn. Consequently, they are able to be sold at an interest rate or lower than they might otherwise, although their transactions costs are higher than conventional bonds because of the creation of SPVs, as well as payment of various jurist and legal fees for structuring the bond issuance. <laughs> <laughs> Challenges, criticism and controversy <laughs> <laughs> Challenges According to a 2015 IMF report, the supply of sukuk falls short of demand, and, with some exceptions, issuance takes place without a comprehensive strategy to develop the domestic market. Sukuk are seen as well suited for infrastructure financing because of their risk sharing property could also help fill financing gaps. National authorities should, therefore, focus on developing the necessary infrastructure, including promoting true securitization and enhanced clarity over investors' rights, and on stepping up regular sovereign issuance to provide a benchmark for the private sector. Increased sovereign issuance should be underpinned by sound public financial management. 
Key challenges to the Islamic finance industry as a whole, including Sukuk, as of 2016 include according to the State of the Global Islamic Economy Report, 2015-16 and the IMF are low levels of awareness and understanding of Islamic finance products and services among the public, leading them to not buy, a scarcity of Sharia-compliant monetary policy instruments and a lack of understanding of the monetary transmission mechanism. Complex financial products and corporate structures in some countries' jurisdictions because regulatory and supervisory frameworks do not address the unique risks of the industry. Consequently, what is needed is increased regulatory clarity and harmonization, better cooperation between Islamic and conventional financial standard setters, and further improvement of supervisory tools. Underdeveloped safety nets and resolution frameworks. In many places these include complete Islamic deposit insurance systems where premiums are invested in Sharia-compliant assets, or Sharia-compliant lenders of last resort. Regulators who do not always have the capacity or willingness to ensure Sharia compliance, defaults in three years during and following the financial crisis of 2007 2008, 2008, 2009, 2010. There were at least 21 substantial Sukuk defaults, and several large near defaults, such as that of Dubai World, saved by a $10 billion loan from Abu Dhabi as of 2009. There were a number of cases where the Sukuk had defaulted or were in serious trouble. In May 2009, Investment Dar of Kuwait defaulted on $100 million Sukuk. Saad Group set up a committee to restructure $650 million Golden Belt 1 Sukuk. Standard and Poor's cut the rating of that Sukuk owing to the non-availability of vital information. Another source Mushtaq Parker claims there have been a mere three or four Sukuk defaults, East Cameron Sukuk in Louisiana a dispute relating to the profit-sharing arrangement of the instrument, the investment Dar Sukuk to do with cash flow problems of the company and its subsidiaries, albeit it had a side dispute with an investor, Blom Bank relating to the Syriah aspects of the contracts, and the notorious Saad al Gosebi Sukuk default more a market failure and an internecine dispute between the two Saudi partners. Protection from originators default at least one of the three major bond rating agencies for the U.S. has indicated doubts about the validity of transfer of assets from the originator in Sukuk in the event of an insolvency of the originator and attempts by creditors to seize the assets. Fitch has not reviewed any transaction to date that would satisfy these requirements. Underscoring Fitch's concern was the bankruptcy of East Cameron Partners ECP which issued a multiple award-winning Sukuk in 2006 but filed for bankruptcy in October 2008, prompting a legal dispute about the creditor's right to $167.67 million in Sukuk assets. The final decision of the case did not clearly resolve this issue. Another major rating agency, S&P, downgraded the Sukuk of Dubai Islamic Bank and Sharjah Islamic Bank, according to Ibrahim Ward as of 2010. What is still unclear is what happens to Sukuk when they fail, an issue that has not been tested in court. In Malaysia, some Sukuk issues have junk status, and two other Sukuk are already in default: the Easter Cameron Gas Company in the United States and Investment Dar of Kuwait. One of the unresolved questions is whether Sukuk holders should stand in the line of creditors or in the line of the owners of underlying assets. In reviewing cases of Sukuk defaults and bankruptcies, Mudassir Siddiqui complained that through reading many cases that have so far been litigated in courts around the world, I have found that in almost all cases, the courts have struggled to reconcile the substance and form of the contract. Was it a sale, lease, construction or partnership contract or a financing arrangement between the parties? According to Rodney Wilson, when Sukuk payments are delayed or fail, the means of redress are potentially more complex than for conventional notes and bonds. In particular, under Sharia leniency towards debtors is favored, which inevitably raises moral hazard problems. Discrediting Sharia compliance there have been at least two cases of companies seeking to restructure their debt i.e. pay creditors less, claiming that debt they had issued was not in compliance with Sharia. In a 2009 court filing investment DAR, a Kuwaiti company claimed a transaction was taking deposits at interest. In June 2017, an independent gas company Dana Gas PJSC declared two of its Sukuk, with a total worth of $700 million, no longer Sharia compliant, and offered to exchange the Sukuk with a new one which would pay less than half of the current profit rates and without a conversion feature. The Sukuk were issued in 2013 and due to mature on 30 October 2017. Dana refused to make payments on them, alleging that changes in Islamic finance over recent years have made the bonds unlawful in the UAE. 
A month earlier, Dana had announced plans to restructure the debt, stating it needed to focus on short to medium term cash preservation. Sukuk holders, represented by fund manager BlackRock and Deutsche Bank, have been arguing against Dana in a London High Court. In October 2017, a court in the Emirate of Sharjah in the UAE, where Dana had filed for protection, postponed a ruling on the Sukuk. The issue has been called one of the greatest challenges that the Islamic finance industry has faced in recent times, but the idea that the case is a blow to Islamic finance has also been dismissed as poppycock. Topic criticism and controversy Sukuk have been criticized as evading the restrictions on RIBA and imitating conventional bonds. In February 2008, the AAOIFI's Board of Scholars, led by the granddaddy of modern day Islamic finance, Sheikh Mohammed Taki Usmani, stated that as many as 85% of Sukuk sold to date may not comply with all the precepts of Sharia. In a paper entitled, Sukuk and Their Contemporary Applications, Released in November 2007, Usmani identified the following three key structuring elements that differentiate Sukuk from conventional bonds. Sukuk must represent ownership shares in assets or commercial or industrial enterprises that bring profits or revenues. Payments to Sukuk holders should be the share of profits after costs of the assets or enterprise. The value payable to the Sukuk holder on maturity should be the current market value of the assets or enterprise and not the principal originally invested. Usmani stated that by complex mechanisms, Sukuk had taken on the same characteristics as conventional interest bearing bonds, as they do not return to investors more than a fixed percentage of the principal, based on interest rates, while guaranteeing the return of investors' principal at maturity. Usmanis estimate that 85% of all Sukuk in issuance were not Sharia compliant was based on the existence of guaranteed returns and or repurchase obligations from the issuer. A violation of Sharia. Following Usmani's criticisms the global Sukuk market shrunk from $50 billion in 2007 to approximately $14.9 billion in 2008, although how much of this was due to his criticisms or the global financial crisis is a matter of debate, the Financial Times has described this as an ongoing debate over form versus substance in Islamic finance, identifying two kinds of Sukuk, asset-backed. Sukuk and the more numerous, less strict, allegedly non-compliant, asset-based Sukuk. In asset-backed Sukuk there is a true sale between the originator and the special purpose vehicle SPV that issues the Sukuk and Sukuk holders do not have recourse to the originator. Asset prices may vary over time. In contrast, asset-based Sukuk do give their holders recourse to the originator, and so more closely resemble conventional bonds. Other critics include non-orthodox economist Mahmoud El Gamal, who has complained that while providers of Sukuk and other Islamic finance instruments will often describe their distinguishing feature as the prohibition of interest, they will then proceed to report the interest rate that Islamic instruments pay. For instance, Reuters August 13, 2002, coverage of Bahrain's $800 million Sukuk followed their characterization of Islamic financial products as interest-free with a report that those Sukuk will pay 4% annual profit. He also complains that despite claims that Sukuk, unlike conventional bonds, share the risk of their underlying asset and may increase or decrease in value, in Sukuk such as the Tabreed Sukuk mentioned above, steady payment of rent is written into the Sukuk contract giving them a risk structure, essentially, the same as conventional bonds. Another observer, Salman Ali, found that many of the Sukuk structures do not conform to the Sharia. According to Ali, while most of the Sukuk make an effort to remain within Sharia bounds, they replicate conventional debt instruments. They often combine more than one contract, which individually may be Sharia compliant but when combined may defeat the objective of the Sharia. Furthermore, the Sukuk rate of return is often tied to the Libor London Interbank Offered Rate or Eurobor Euro Interbank Offered Rate interest rate rather than to the underlying business that the Sukuk is financing. This makes the Sukuk so similar to conventional debt instruments that it is difficult to tell one from the other. Ali believes this may be why rating agencies such as Standard and Poor's and Moody's apply the same methodology for rating Sukuk as for conventional debt instruments. In 2011, Safari conducted various statistical and econometrics tests to check the argument that Sukuk securities are merely the same as conventional bond. 
However, his results on the comparison of yield to maturity of sukuk and that of conventional bonds show that sukuk securities are different from conventional bonds. In response to this argument, it was pointed out that yield to maturity reflects the interplay of supply and demand which may be affected by a financial product's packaging and target market rather than just the substance of the product alone. In 2011 Goldman Sachs abandoned a $2 billion Sukuk program and had registered with the Irish Stock Exchange, after some analysts stated that its Sukuk might violate Islamic bans on interest payments and monetary speculation in 2014 it successfully drew about $1.5 billion in orders for the five-year Sukuk. Topic countries using Sukuk Topic Bahrain Bahrain is a major issuer of Sukuk. Topic Brunei Starting in 2006 the Brunei government issued short-term Sukuk al-Ijara securities. As of 2017 they have issued over $9.605 billion worth. Topic Egypt On 8 May 2013, Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi approved a law allowing the government to issue Sukuk, however as of May 2013 the relevant regulations have not been specified. As of 2016 the Egyptian government stated it would use innovative financial tools for the implementation of government projects, such as Sukuk. Topic Gambia In 2007, Gambia replaced Sudan as one of the ten countries issuing Sukuk. It has one of the lowest amount of Sukuk issuance, with $12.60 mil as of 2008. Topic Indonesia According to IslamicFinance.com, at N2013 outstanding stock in Indonesia's Sukuk market was $12.3 billion, with growth coming driven from the government sector. Topic Iran Although the first use of Islamic financial instruments in Iran goes back to 1994 with the issuance of Musharaka Sukuk by Tehran Municipality to finance Nawab project, the enactment of Iran securities market law, and new instruments and financial institutions development law was done respectively in 2005 and 2010 to pave the way for the appliance of such instruments to develop financial system of the country. The first Ijara Sukuk was issued in Iranian capital market in January 2011 for financing Mayan Air Company with the value of 291,500 million rials. Topic Malaysia More than half of Sukuk issued worldwide are in the Malaysian ringgit currency, US dollar denominated Sukuk or second. Malaysia is one of the few countries that makes it mandatory for Sukuk and other debt papers to be rated. RAM Rating Services BHD CEO Fu Su Yin says the total issuance of Sukuk corporate bonds in 2012 was ERM 71.7 billion while conventional bonds totaled ERM 48.3 billion. As at 2011, Malaysia was the highest global Sukuk issuer by issuing 69% of world's total issuances. Topic Kazakhstan In June 2012, Kazakhstan finalized its debut Sukuk which will be issued by the Development Bank of Kazakhstan DBK in the Malaysian market. The DBK, which is 100% owned by the Government of Kazakhstan, is working with HSBC and Royal Bank of Scotland RBS to manage the ringgit-denominated issuance which is effectively a quasi-sovereign offering. The issuance will be listed on the Kazakhstan Stock Exchange, which has developed the infrastructure to list Islamic financial products such as Ahara and Musharaka Sukuk and investment funds. Topic Kuwait Topic Pakistan Pakistan issued a Sukuk of $1 billion to fund a trade deficit with a yield of 5%. Topic Qatar Qatar authorities and government-related companies are looking into funding for its infrastructure projects by issuing Sukuk. In 2011 Qatar issued 11% of global Sukuk. Topic Saudi Arabia Saudi Aramco, a Saudi Arabian national petroleum and natural gas company, issued its first ever Sukuk on 6 April 2017. Raising approximately 11.25 BN rials $3 billion, the move was prompted as a response to the low oil prices. Later in the same month, the Saudi government raised $9 billion in Sukuk. Half were five-year Sukuk with 100 basis point swap spread and the other half had a 10-year tenor with 140 basis point spread. On September 2017, the government sold further domestic Sukuk worth 7 billion rials $1.9 billion and another 4.77 billion rials $1.27 billion were sold in December. These combined five-year Sukuks priced at 2.75%, seven-year ones at 3.25%, and a 10-year tranche at 3.45%. Topic Singapore Singapore was the first non-Muslim majority country to issue a sovereign Sukuk in 2009. 
Called the Ma Sukuk domestically, it is issued via a wholly owned subsidiary of the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Singapore Sukuk Private Limited. The Singapore Ma Sukuk is treated similarly to the conventional Singapore Government Securities (SGS) in aspects such as compliance with liquidity requirements. Since then, there have been several Sukuk issuances in Singapore by local and foreign issuers. Singapore City Development Limited issued the first Ahara Sukuk in 2009, and Kazana SHDBHD issued a 1.5 billion Singapore dollars Sukuk in 2010 to finance its acquisition of Parkway Holdings. In 2013, there were two new Sukuk programs arranged for Singapore listed companies, Swiber Holdings and Valiance Holdings, with the former issuing a 150 million Singapore dollars five year Sukuk in August 2013. Topic Somalia The Somalia Stock Exchange SSE is the national bourse of Somalia. In August 2012, the SSE signed a Memorandum of Understanding to assist it in technical development. The agreement includes identifying appropriate expertise and support. Sharia compliant Sukuk bonds and halal equities are also envisioned as part of the deal as the nascent stock market develops. Topic Turkey Turkey issued its debut Sukuk in October 2012. The October 2012 issuance was a double issuance, with one being in US dollars issued on 10 October 2012 for $1.5 billion, and one being in Turkish lira issued on 2 October 2012 for 1.62 lry. According to data from Sukuk.com, the US dollars issuance was oversubscribed and was initially planned to be for $1 billion, but because of strong demand from the Middle East it was increased to $1.5 billion. Turkey returned to the Sukuk market in October 2013 with a $1.25 billion issuance. Topic United Arab Emirates As of January 2015, Nasdaq Dubai has listed 18 Sukuk valued at a total $24 billion. The latest of these is Fly Dubai. The UAE has also attracted Western investment in the form of GE, which sold a five-year, $500 million Sukuk in 2009, and investment banker Goldman Sachs, which became first conventional U.S. bank to issue Sukuk in 2014. Topic United Kingdom On 25 June 2014, HM Treasury became the first country outside of the Islamic world to issue a SAC. This £200 million issue was 11.5 times oversubscribed and was priced at the same level as the equivalent UK gilts UK government bonds at 2.036% PA. The SAC was linked to the rental income of UK government property. Topic Hong Kong Hong Kong has issued two sovereign sukuk as of middle of 2015. It issued its first issuance consisting of a five-year $1 billion Ahara Sukuk in September 2014 offering a profit rate of 2.005%. It issued its second sovereign Sukuk in June 2015 also for $1 billion with a five-year maturity which used an innovative Wakala structure offering a profit rate of 1.894%. Topic see also Islamic banking and financing Murabaha profit and loss sharing Jemek topic References topic Notes topic Citations topic Books, documents, journal articles El Gamal, Mahmoud A. 2006. Islamic Finance, Law, Economics, and Practice PDF. New York, New York, Cambridge. ISBN 9780521864145. Jamaldeen, Falil 2012. Islamic Finance for Dummies. John Wiley & Sons. ISBN 9781118233375. Jamaldeen, Falil 2015. Islamic Banking in Pakistan, Sharia Compliant Finance and the Quest to Make Pakistan More Islamic. Routledge. ISBN 9781317366175. Jamaldeen, Falil 2013. Muhammad Akram 2013. What is Wrong with Islamic Economics? Analyzing the Present State and Future Agenda. Edward Elgar Publishing. Retrieved 26 March 2015. Saeed, A. Salah, O. 2014, 2013. Development of Sukuk, Pragmatic and Idealist Approaches to Sukuk Structures PDF. Journal of International Banking Law and Regulation 1, 41-52. Retrieved 18 March 2017. State of the Global Islamic Economy Report 2015-16 PDF. 
Thomson Reuters and Dinar Standard. Retrieved 19 March 2017. Usmani, Muhammad Taki November 2007. Sukkuk and their contemporary applications. AAOIFI.